We're gonna talk about deep fishing today. It's not gonna be as much of a focus on catching fish as it is explaining, first of all, the ethics of fishing deep fish because of bear trauma. Second, the techniques and approaches to doing so. The easiest way to fish super deep fish really is jigging wraps. Not fun, but now we got a fish on again. It's not 34, but it's a fish. Purple jigging wrap. What is up, fisher people? So, I had all kinds of ideas of what I was going to do out here for this video, and they might have fallen through to some extent. The fish were not set up in the spots, at least not near in the numbers where I had been catching them. So I started doing some driving around and one thing led to another and then it just became like, all right, something's changed. I just need to drive around, look at stuff and figure this whole thing out. So that's what I've been doing. Matter of fact, I went three hours without dropping a line, nothing but driving around and took a bunch of screenshots and basically what I learned was the bait has gone absurdly deep for the most part. About the only bait that I can find is like 60 to 70 feet. That's where all the smelt are. Don't really feel like fishing walleyes in 60, 70 feet, but as I'm driving around, a lot of the walleyes that I did find, the most common depth was like 42. 42 seemed to be a very magic number that held tighter schools of fish. There were some fish occasionally in 32 to 36 is another popular range. And then there's plenty of them scattered out in that 50 to 55 range. And I think I saw some in 60, 70 feet of water too. So we're gonna talk about deep fishing today. It's not gonna be as much of a focus on catching fish as it is like explaining, first of all, the ethics of fishing deep fish because of bear trauma. Second, the techniques and approaches to doing so. But basically, when it comes to finding what's going on, like you don't start graphing where you think the fish are going to be. You start graphing way deeper to see what's going on, see where the bait is, and all that kind of stuff. So when I push into these spots, I start climbing up and angling into them. Usually steep breaks. You need a steep break to even find that kind of water to see where the bait is sitting and see if I can find some bait squeezing up a little shallower, 42 feet, or if I can at least find some fish kind of in that 42 to 45 range like I was talking about and I want to try to find them as concentrated as possible for them I'm trying to like I think the best thing you could have done today is troll rigs bouncers spinners something in like 42 feet on a steep break where you found the most concentrated fish not really what I'm here to do today the easiest way to fish super deep fish really is jigging wraps because you can cast a variety of depths, work it up and down shelves, and the bait gets down so fast that you contact those fish almost immediately. But sometimes, especially in this uh, late summer, not yet fall period, they can get a little spooky with jigging wraps and they might not take, or if they do, you might get one and then you might scatter them out. So it can also be good to put on some heavy jigs, put some minnows down, maybe even a night crawler. I'm dead sticking a drop shot with the minnow. I'm gonna try casting a minnow. I'm gonna dead stick the drop shot in as shallow water as I've seen fish, which is like 32. And then I'm gonna cast the minnow even deeper. But since we're fishing down there, here's the key, you've probably heard this before, fish get barrel trauma. Once you're fishing below 30 feet for sure, you start to run into some high risk of fish death areas. And if you're fishing 40 plus for sure, those fish aren't going to make it. So you always hear they say, whatever you catch, you need to keep. And the point being, if those fish are going to die, don't catch more than your limit. If you decide that a fish looks okay and you want to try to release it, you know, that's up to you. If you keep the fish, it's definitely going to die if you release it. It's got a chance at living, right? Since the probability is so high that they're going to die, if you're catching more than your limit of walleyes in 40 feet of water, you're doing a massive disservice to the fishery and the in the resource. If you're catching more than your limit of walleyes in 40 feet of water, you're doing a massive disservice. If you're catching more than your limit of walleyes in 40 feet of water, you're doing a massive disservice. So that's the setup. 
that's the deal. So you usually hear that adage, try to fish the lightest jig you possibly can. I don't like to fish anything more than a quarter typically. And if you're doing more like snap, like sometimes that snap jigging with live bait can work pretty well. With like a half ounce jig, three eighth ounce, something like that. That's why the jigging wrap stuff works so well again though, because they're nice and heavy and they just rock it down to the bottom, get it right into the fish. I got a three eighth ounce on the drop shot to keep that pretty vertical and get it down nice and quickly. I also did bring crawlers, like crawlers can still work. Crawlers on bottom bouncers, I think are still an effective option, but minnows start to become a lot more in play late summer. What I like to see is like, if those bait clouds were in that 40 to 50 range, then you can find those fish scattered around the bait. But the bait's just so deep, like there might be some fish in that depth in those clouds, but I would rather try to find fish that are in the 40 range that are either chasing a few isolated smelt that you can't see on the graph or just not around smelt. Things got really deep really fast early this year. And that's the thing about Sakakawea is our main forage is rainbow smelt. Rainbow smelt are cold water fish. Sakakawea has a lot of deep water and that's gonna be the coldest water. So they will go down there. And once they're down there, they're pretty much down there until you get a big temp change. And especially like lake turnover will change a lot of things once it turns in October, but this is where we are. This is the deal. Is it actually recording now? Okay. I don't know, for some reason I turned on my camera and nothing happened, but we got our first fish on a jigging wrap anyway. Pitching out in about 35 feet of water. 35 feet's nice. Jigging wrap, walleye, 17 incher. And is that, what's that fish doing there? I don't, is it just hanging out and it decided to bite the jigging wrap? Is it actually chasing bait up into 35? I don't know that answer. There's not much else going on in 35, except for that fish, but I'll take it. Purple descent jigging wrap, but it's got that white bottom. So the purple is real close to blue and blue is the best color that you can see the furthest down deep. So it's a visible color. And then you got the white bottom looking like a smelt. A lot of things going for purple descent when you got deep fish. I ended up losing that minnow. I jigged it off, I assume, or some fish is really sneaky about it. So I just threw the jigging wrap out and got one first cast. Let's try that jigging minnow again. Of course, the other thing to notice with all that water pressure makes your baits move a lot differently. So you'll notice like if you cast a jigging wrap in five feet of water and you rip it, that sucker flies. If you're down in 40, 50 feet and you rip a jigging wrap, it doesn't move as much and you can feel a lot more resistance on it. So your baits aren't moving as much with the same amount of effort, which could be a good thing or a bad thing. Like I was, I got that fish just kind of doing little snappy pops, not a big rip. So it might not take a lot of movement, but point being, if you're trying to create something, it takes more effort to create the same amount of movement now when you're in that deep water. So keep that in mind. Let's slid out here now into like 38 feet. And I'm casting the minnow like at a 45 degree back into like 32. That can be a very effective way to catch fish on these ledges a lot of times is by working it slightly shallower to deeper on the way. And I got, I got my Fox River FRX 7.6 medium light fast for my jigging application. And I got my 7.1 FRX medium fast for the jigging wrap. Don't have a Fox River for the drop shot. Don't have enough Fox River rods in the locker yet. All three of them do have pissy fun reels on them. So remember if interested, I got discount codes. BF10 for Fox River, BF15 for pissy fun. Saves you a little bit of money. Helps out my channel a little bit. Of all the things that I've used as an affiliate for sure, the Fox River rods and the Pissy Fun Reels are the best of them. I don't like to tell you that something's good if it's not. These are some of the best rods I've ever used though, and the reels. The only thing I don't know about the reels yet is how long they'll last. It's one thing you can't tell until you've had them for a long time, but they are as light as they say they are, and they are as smooth as they say they are, which is two great things. And again, I got the 2000 size on the jigging wraps to wench up a lot of line quickly. I got the 1000 size for the regular jigging application 
keep everything as light as possible. I don't need a ton of line. I don't need to pull up a ton of line when I'm jigging. So might have to switch back to the jigging route. I just made a cast a little deeper. Of the boat's in 40, 40. That's probably 45 to 50. Working back in. And that really takes a lot of effort to move that bait. I just watched a boat that went inside me there, probably in 35, 6, 7 feet of water. Caught a smallmouth bass. That's deep for a smallie, eh? And it's such a sharp drop that, like, depending on how my boat spins in spot lock, I'm anywhere from 38 to 42. That's a sharp drop. That's what you're looking for. And if you are going to get some shallow fish, shallow, you don't have to come up quite as far from there. That feels like a decent fish there. Should be at least as big or bigger than the one I just caught. Felt like he was hooked pretty good too. It's a nice fish. Probably a 19, 20 incher. Jigging wrap seems to be the winner of the day today. He liked the purple jigging wrap. Now my boat back is in 36 feet. Jeez. You can see how steep the differences are. Dinner. I'll tell you what, when you uh, rip up into a 19, 20 inch wall, and that feels pretty good. Pretty good indeed. And I was casting, but he kind of hit it by the time I was vertical for a long time there. So that fish seemed to enjoy the vertical. And I'm just like, I'm parking on this shelf, kind of waiting for fish to cruise into me. Like there are times where I want to just troll and keep casting the whole shelf. I don't think the fish are like super aggressive right now. I just kind of want to let them roll through and try to let the hungry ones come to me, I guess. Maybe trolling would work just fine. I haven't tried it yet, but almost looks like a mark coming into screen. If you get a fish that's just barely on the edge of your cone angle, they're not going to be a very dark return. It's going to be a thinner line and it's going to be like faded color. And every other pop, I'm like having to, adj ooh, having to adjust my line out because one pop lands in 38 and the next one lands in 41 or something. Oh, that was a fish. Well, I'm just gonna have to jig wrap all day, I guess. But I think me casting is potentially bringing some fish in to investigate and then I can work vertically for a while while they're around. And like a lot of times you can get them to then bite your dead stick live bait on the way in. Today, it seems like they're more in tune to the jigging wrap bite itself, but regardless, some days jigging wraps will spook them. Other days, it at the very least intrigues them and they will follow it in. And then you might have a crew around your boat for a while. So I like the double duty. Working jigging wraps with some kind of live bait is a really good combo. So I think we've narrowed down that most of the fish that are biting are kind of 40 to 42 feet. Now the boat's sitting in 38, but 42 is right here. So 42 and a snap jig is starting to be a good presentation, at least today, but it'll come and go and keep improving as we get closer to fall. Nothing on that minnow yet. A little wind would probably help for the live bait bite. Boy, it's getting hot out here already, jeez. It is September now, but just barely. Nah, it's crawling in my ears, my eyes. The wind is coming back. Cool thing. It's starting to be more of a northwest instead of southwest thing. My boat is spinning. Now my back end is in 46 feet, just like that. So I'm trying to imagine when I was ripping that on this side of the boat, I was probably in 46 to 48 feet when I got that fish to bite, that last fish that I caught. And was he in that depth? Or did he come out of 55, 60, 70 feet 
to chase it. Yeah, I think a lot of these fish could be sitting down in 60, 70 feet of water, and then you might catch them a little shallower. So now the boat's in 49 back here. Why don't we throw a cast behind us, which could potentially reach 70, 80 feet, and rip it in from there. It's going to be a lot of effort to move this bait back there. That bait is down deep. If we get a bite right away down there, that'll tell us something. That's a snag. Oh no, there's a tree down there. Oh, there's another bite. Again, on a retide, purple jigging it up. Oh, this fish is heavier. Oh, this fish is much heavier. Oh boy, what is it? Oh, that's much heavier. That's much heavier. I didn't get to experience the full weight of the fish initially. And then once it started hunkering down, that was ooh, way different story. Way different story. I'm trying to get my other line out of the way in case he runs into it. And it just got off. Dang it. Ugh. Oh, Ugh. maybe I should have just forgotten about my other line and let it go. Could have always snagged a garbage fish, who knows. He got off so easily, not doing anything. Almost makes me feel like it was a snagged catfish or carp or who knows. But uh, Would that fish have come off if I wasn't messing with my other rod? Chicken wraps can get a lot of bites, but boy, can you lose some fish with that bait too. The amount of fish that I wish I would have seen on a jigging wrap over the years. Mm. Oh, oh, that's another good fish too. And did that just go into a snag? That was a fish. Oh, no. Unless it just took that much time for my line to catch up with it to get tight. I really think that was a fish first. How many snag? I jogged away from the other snag. Okay. Jogged again away from another tree. A little rotten string of luck here for a bit. Not fun. But now we got a fish on again. Also feels like a decent fish. Hard to tell this deep, but now he needs to make another run, otherwise I'm gonna change my opinion. Jig and wrap bite is definitely improved today from what it has been. That is a fact. It's a nice quality eater fish. Good thing I'm like Superman, I got a closet full of these. I don't go anywhere without at least five purple jigging wraps. And of a few other colors, but purple especially. If I could only fish one color ever, that'd be the one. So we fish for almost an hour and a half now. We've had five bites, three landed, all on jigging wraps, nothing on minnows, all very deep. And now I got the boat set in. 42 feet of water, just pitching slightly behind into like 50, 55, working it back. And with the, ex the exception of like jogging away from a couple of snaggy areas, we haven't moved at all. They're just traveling up and down this shelf, coming up out of deeper water is my presumption to feed. And once that wind came up, even though it's blowing away from the shelf, we definitely started getting a few more bites. There's a little dry spell there when it was calm and natty. If I get a big one, I hope it's like 34 inches so I can keep it and put it on the wall and not feel bad about not releasing it. Is there a 34 incher here? It's not 34, but it's a fish. Where's the 34 inchers, Mr. Ensminger? The only guy I know that's caught a 34 inch walleye that I know, like I know Jeff, I don't know the other people that have done it. 
Does that make sense? I know other people have caught 34 inchers. He's the only person that I know and have fished with personally that have caught 34 inch walleyes. So this could be quick work to get our five fish if it keeps like this. And they're all quality fish too. We haven't caught a super small one yet. That last one was a little on the light side, but not bad. 16 inches probably. The rest of them have been very nice walleyes. It's getting busy in here. I don't want to say it was me, but it was not this busy when I first started fishing here. Since I started catching these last few, I have not marked anything either. So I am definitely getting them out here. 45, 50, maybe 55 feet of water. Not seen one sneak into 42 yet and get in the sonar. It'd be weird if this bite quit now, wouldn't it? There were plenty of other spots I could have fished. They just felt like I needed to troll them. So every time I work it back to the boat, I obviously look at my graph to see if I did bring in a mark. If I did, I'll stay there. If I didn't, I'll get it back out deep. We'll go till one o'clock, 17 minutes. Whether I get a fish or not, whether we land four or five fish, I don't really see the difference. The purpose has been served. I'll jog ahead a little. It's possible they slid up a little shallower. You never know. There's a nice little stair step down there. Now we're in 40. Maybe we'll start seeing some marks there. I'll still cast back here anyway, but oh, there's a mark on the screen in 38. I'm almost to the boat. Bite fish. The fish went down to bottom, which is a thing they do sometimes if they hunt a bait. So we'll work it a little bit. Eight or 10 pops and then we throw back out. That's six of our 17 minutes gone. Starting to feel the need to jog. Did I change my cadence? Sometimes if I get a little excited when I start catching fish, I find that I'm working it faster. Maybe I should slow down. That's probably not it, but it's almost one o'clock. If I don't catch this fish, I'm gonna make an effort to just cruise around a little bit, see if I can mark some fish, make sure I'm on something quick, and see if we can catch that one last one. Otherwise, we go eat lunch. If I find some marks, I give it five minutes. There's a mark. Maybe there's more in the area. Yeah, two. I think there's a real good chance the fish either left the area or kind of slid back down way deep off the shelf when that wind, so like right away when the wind switched, we started getting some wind, the fish that were still there kind of perked up and bit, but now I think they have evacuated probably. So my only hope here is just trying to get one straggler Hope you enjoyed the video hit the like button if you did maybe subscribe to the channel maybe consider supporting the channel on patreon and you can watch that shallow fishing video too now that you finish watching this one and then until next time later fisher people the bite's over go home already go Video's done, turn off your TV or watch another one. Last cast, Dad, I promise.